Thank you. We all, I think, I'm being punked today. And you see what happened? So it's called, and asked to prepare a little something about resiliency. And then Lola's Eric Eli is back there, and he says, no, Bash, we've changed it up. You're doing prosperity. <laughs> and I tried to tell him I don't know nothing about prosperity, but I do know something about being resilient. And you know, I don't know a thing about celebrating the anniversary of Katrina. You know, Katrina is one of those things, like, do you really want to celebrate this? Or are we celebrating the storm now? It's like, uh, one of those things that happens to all, in all of our lives. It happened in my life a couple of times. Once when I was nine, this horrific event, my father was paralyzed in 1977 for life. My sister dies. That's another event. Joined the Marines and I crossed the lines through a minefield. That was another one of those events. This event of Katrina is one that still gives me this sick feeling. And I think a feeling that we all got. We all realize that, hey, what can we do? What is my life all about? And what am I trying to do with the talents that I've been given? And so for me, it was very clear that I needed to do something. I needed to act swiftly using whatever resources that I had. I thought for sure, being that I just purchased my restaurant from, the, uh, from my investors just two months prior, that I would certainly be out of business. And so I thought, like the Titanic, I'll just go down in, in glory. And we're just gonna go down using the best china, silver, this and that, using, doing what I can just to make people happy. And it hit me. And this whole thing about resilience isn't something that you really think about. You do think about prosperity, but you never think about resilience. And you never think about the creative process that goes on. You think about resilience. Resilience is when a force is hit with some sort of stress, you know, when, when a force hits with uh, and stresses an object, and the object's ability to bounce back, that's resilience. And like the people, and like the city of New Orleans, we've known our share of stress. It's never been a cushy place to live. We only live here because it's something personal. We only live here because we love it. And it's that passion, and it's that drive for all of us to resurrect our city and to help fellow man that pushes us to the points that we've seen such incredible growth after a horrific event like Katrina. I'm not going to bore you with all these little stories of what we did and how we did it, because it's not important. The important story is the story of survival. And what makes New Orleans special? If you ask most people why you live in New Orleans, it's going to come down to a couple things. It's going to come down to not just food, but it's come, coming down to family and friends. And the people. And the people equal culture. And that culture expresses itself through her music and her food. And if you really think about that, how many other, how many other cities in America can claim such a thing. We have something indigenous because we have the people that love it and foster it. Creativity plays a role in all this because whenever you have such a uh, profound culture, it's because you foster creativity and you, you foster the arts and creativity is the byproduct. So how does creativity play into um, Bouncing back from something so traumatic like uh, Katrina, very simple. We know how to bend. We're not, again, we're not so soft as we're able to break at the first sign of stress. We bend a lot. We bend rules. We figure out ways around them. We figure out how to live within them. And as a chef, I realized the day Katrina hit that it wasn't about me. <coughs> and I know Brett Anderson's out there somewhere probably listening to this or seeing this on the web, and it's not about being the best chef, but it's about something bigger. It's about the culture, and it's about representing this culture very well in everything that we do. So we had an opportunity, and my partner Octavio Monti and I risked everything on creating a new culture, a new culture of business, one that invests in people, one that pays people a proper wage, one that gives 
unconditionally. And in return, we've received so many gifts from our employees. And I've had a lot of times, Octavio likes to say that I dabble in socialism. <laughs> because there was this time that we made oodles of money and we could have been prosperous. But the idea was, in my little dabble with uh, socialism, is that let's just take it all and distribute it amongst all the people that work for us. They can then bail themselves out. And consequently, what happened is that they all became my partner. And so we grew from 120 employees to now almost 650 employees yeah. in five years. And it wasn't through design, but it was just through creativity, resilience, passion. And not just mine, but whenever you give it, it comes right back. And what you're witnessing today in the city is the city really taken back by its people. We're saying we're not going to accept politicians who don't represent us well. We're putting our foot down to the way that we educate our children. Charity today just doesn't mean trying to make it into the social section like it did prior to Katrina. Charity means breaking down barriers and walls, helping people so that they can later help themselves and help us as a society. And so it's so strange to sit here today and think about what was it like five years ago? I don't want to go back there. But I'm so damn proud of where we are now. Because I would have never thought it possible. And we all looked and we saw the pictures and we, those of us that were here, saw the streets. And to, to even go back there, to me, it just takes my, takes my focus away from where it really needs to be. <coughs> Building the city that we know New Orleans can be. Making sure that our children <coughs> And in my case, making sure my employees, that my cooks, become stewards of their community. And that we create a localized economy. If we're spending $10 million in groceries, then how about we spend at least $8, 8 million of it here? What would happen if all the restaurants started doing, doing this? You would actually create a sustainable city. And there's many other ways we can keep delving into this. I've only got eight minutes. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is, is that it's happening right before our eyes. And we can't take any of this for granted. And so when you walk around, and many of you from out of town, I'm sure, you walk around, and you'll be asked by people on the streets that you just run into, hey, are you enjoying your time in New Orleans? That didn't happen prior to Katrina. Post-Katrina, we know how important all of you are. Post Katrina, we realize how important people are. <clears throat> and it's tremendous now to look and say, look, the sky's the limit. We're doing away with dirty politicians. We're doing away with failing schools. Is everything perfect? No. But there's a lot of blue sky up there that we can work harder to. And whether I'm a chef or I'm a father, or I'm a business person, it's my obligation to take care of my new wallets and to pass it on to the next generation, whether it's food, hey, David. <coughs> Who's live right now? or whether it's just this culture, that I pass it on in, better, okay. in a better state than when I received it. Okay. And I'm not so big headed to think that, oh yes, it's my city and this and that, because it's not. But it is a place that without, you know, if I wasn't from here, I would be, you know, you know just, uh, nobody care. If I was from Des Moines, and no offense to anybody from Des Moines, nobody would really care about John Nash. It's the city that okay, makes okay. it special. And if I don't pay homage to that, and if we collectively don't pay homage to that, if we collectively don't do what it is that we're capable of doing, taking care and pretty much an act of stewardship with our town, and with our region, wherever we happen to be, then are we passing it on in better hands, in better shape for the next person, to the next generation? And I think that's one thing that I think about when I think of Katrina, and I think about the five years, and 20 pounds, <laughs> and a lot of whiskey drinking. I've been almost sober now for a few weeks. 
Until then, it's been a lot of whiskey jumping. Anyhow, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here today. And